Hello, YouTube. Hey, we're back. Uh, this is Eric. This is Matt. We are 21st Century Arcade, and here we are again. Damn straight we are. So, uh, what happened was... <laughs> we pretty much finished this chapter. Small foible, it's okay. Uh, yeah, very small. We pretty much finished the chapter, and then we realized that we haven't been recording at all. <laughs> um, actually, we might be able to quickly put the audio mix for the game down just a little bit here. Just a smidgen. Just to make sure you can hear us and our wonderful voices. And I don't think we needed that much on the TV either. Oh no, uh, for the... for that there. Oh god, we're... God, we're breaking off. We're, we're, we're breaking all the sense of all this immersion. Yes, it's like it's like we're uh, amateurs or something. That's okay. It, it's like the Sizzen Tower living. No, we don't. We man, if I was a career let's player, that would be a a a whole lot of fun. But I got too much stuff to do. So uh, yeah. So first of all, we originally started this section in Boxing Day. Yes. Uh, and then that got kind of interrupted. And then, oh wait, that's the city, we gotta go this way. And then we came in and finished it here a few months ago. And then we realized we weren't recording. So I had to start the game over from chapter one and get to this point again. Uh, and so here we are at Central Park, New York. We're on uh, Boxing Day, which yeah. is when this. This is literally after Christmas. Well, actually, no, this is Christmas Day here. Oh, okay, yeah. Boxing Day will be the following day. And, uh, but in the real life, we're in the middle of the summer. Yeah, um... Uh, 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 as you stated, we have originally um, uh, had this going for our first uh, attempt on our actual font. Uh, now we've, um, things come from forward. Just to dig this AM a little bit. Uh, you actually want to put that down even Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, we could. Let's crank that to 235. Yeah. Alright. Um, just to date this AM uh, further, um, the uh, pandemic is almost over here in good old Ontario, Canada. How many dead stations have you been only on your first floor? I uh, have my first time on and I also was sick with COVID, so there's something for you listeners, yes. watchers. Yes, you were sick with uh, COVID. That wasn't fun. Um, and, and guess what else? The uh, sky is covered with smoke now because of the forest fires. And so it looks really weird outside. It's like this semi-sunny, semi-overcast kind of look. The sun is red. Operate out of um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, Australia. <laughs> is that is that that's what's going on? Uh, yes. Yeah. Right oh We uh, geez, we moved without me even noticing. That's pretty good. We moved to Australia. God, that sounds fun. No, there's a fire going on like on the border of Ontario and Manitoba right now. Oh shit. Yeah. I have even 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 uh, heard. Of it. Yep. And uh, Gregory got a tornado. It's not the pandemic, it's it's fucking climate change. I guess. It's something. Um now uh now since we are um uh, thankfully um uh, starting to get through the um, worst of it, we should be able to um, uh, um uh, get together to uh, um uh, record. Um uh, you also are are spending quite a bit of time on your own um, uh, independent um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, projects too. Yeah, I Still working on Johnny Pompadori, but I also started a short summer side project of a very kind of low res minimalistic horror game, uh, which I guess is topical for this place. Yeah. Zuki, there you go. Well, oh, speaking of which, I'm going to do the tomorrow. Are you, are you, are you going there? Yeah, hopefully it's going to be better than this. Yeah, I, I, I mean. <laughs> 
If you're going to the zoo and what happens at the zoo reminds you of Parasite Eve, you may want to get the fuck out of the zoo. Yeah. Uh, Before that thing comes to greet you. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying? Yeah, um... Yeah, you, uh, about... Every now and then, I, I, uh, I am, I think to myself, like, hey, should I message up uh, Eric? And, and, Well, last week I uh, actually had my other job. I had day camps like all morning, basically until three o'clock, so I wouldn't have been able to do anything yeah. um, like every single day. Got it. Uh, but that's going to be every other week. So next week I might do that again, and then hopefully the week after, or like Sunday nights or something. We'll figure it out, but yeah, I, I do want to put in a little bit more. I mean, like, this is, this game is objectively better than uh, Never Dead, so I do want to actually get through it someday. Oh yeah. Like, like actually, soon. No, we still plan to beat um, uh, Never Dead. Right. Uh, uh, we made a, 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 um, a decision to uh, finish what we started. Uh, however, that being said, it doesn't mean that we have to finish it within a year or two or whatever. We can right. take our time. But with this game, I actually want to get it done. Yeah. Absolutely. There are other games we want to play, especially like... Especially Never Dead. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that is what I was going to say. No, no, sorry, go on. Uh, I don't even remember. Especially like... Well, I do want to try and get us going, some uh, Silent Hill going for the Halloween. Uh, you still want to do a um, um, uh, endurance yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. It's not an extremely overlong game, and, uh, and I think I don't know if we don't. You know, it's like you gotta be like, okay, if we're gonna sit down and finish it now, then we know that it's gonna be good and done. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But but then if you do the one session and then it's like, oh shit. The, Schedules don't line up. That's what it's like being adults, folks. That's, that's, that's what it is. Adulting sucks. If we were career Let's Players, um, uh, this would simplify things um, uh, um, uh, quite a bit because this would be a, our, 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 our full-time job. But I got, like, I got shit going on that I want to do, so, um, uh, so, um, uh, so do you. It's not that easy. Plus, we don't make enough revenue off of this. <laughs> yeah, not enough. You know, we're, we're, we're getting there, but... Going from zero to well, you know what? We're making twice as much as we used to, right? Because we used to make zero, and now we make double zero. That's that. Uh, that uh, uh, that's the most powerful zero. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Double. But nothing is still nothing. I don't know. Did they go down? I used to be a big 21st century um, arcade <laughs> fan back in their glory days, but now, I don't know, I just feel that they don't care. Uh, we're sitting at a... Uh, okay. I don't think they went down, I don't think. I think they went up, I think. Maybe. So Matt, what have you been playing lately? Streets of Rage 4. You've just been plugging away at it? like. Uh, uh, so, what I've been doing lately is... I have been, um... um so prior to this, to the Streets of Rage 4 DLC dropping, I was playing a lot of um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, Borderlands. So I've been um, uh, jumping back and back and forth between um, um, uh, Borderlands 1 and uh, 2. And I was doing that for a good couple of weeks. And, and, and um, uh, five days ago, on uh, um, uh, July 15th, we had my DLC drop for um, uh, Streets of Rage 4. And uh, guess what? That's still... I don't know if I've uh, mentioned this here on the uh, channel yet, but I honestly believe that on a technical level, it's the best beat em up that's ever been created. I can't think of a better technical beat em up than it. 
little I played of it, uh, definitely seems that way. It's, the animation is like perfect, the, the art style is perfect, and it plays like a dream. Absolutely. Um, that's the really nice thing about something, about like a, a niche of a genre, like beat em ups. Holy shit, I had 9 HP there. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay, we should, we should keep an eye on. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll keep an eye on too. Good boy, folks. Uh, so, so yeah, that's the thing that a niche genre, like, um, a shit's very much about a lot of benefits of is, um, when you put out um, uh, beat em ups, they tend to, like, they tend to sit for um, uh, um, uh, quite a while. Like, there's not uh, two dozen beat em ups getting released per year, like a uh, uh, first person shooter or, 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 or something like that. Yeah. Um, we're basically in a beat em up um, uh, renaissance right now because um, uh, Streets of Rage 4 is out, some more um, uh, niche beat em ups have been coming out, like um, uh, Fight and Rage. Um, 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 for example, Streets of Red, um, uh, Death or, um, uh, <laughs> everything with a with a Streets of Rage pun in it. It is a is a is a Death Road to Canada. Hey, I'm a beat em up or I'm um, no. I thinking of. No. I might be thinking of uh, lots of things. Um, uh, on top of uh, those ones, um, uh, um, uh, Shredder's Revenge is uh, coming out um, uh, this year too. Yeah. So they're making a bit of a comeback, and as much as I would have liked to. More beat em ups to play over, over the course of the, uh, the past several years. I also kind of um, uh, appreciate the way that things are now uh, because, like, this genre hasn't been relevant, I want to say, since the 16th bit era. That's, that's when back the beat em ups were at the prime. When I might send out all those old on those streets and all those Capcom gems. Absolutely. So, so we so, so we had that huge dry spell, and that almost kind of benefits the uh, genre because now developers have had years to kind of hone their craft and, and, and to go, okay, what do people like in games and, and the way that they function nowadays? How, how much do people care about and the prioritize art? Yeah. How, like a like a, well, what kind of um, uh, music should we use for this? So. So uh, um, our devs have had years to basically go back to the uh, drawing board and practically reinvent the wheel on like how can we make a perfect demo of the And now there's so much less um, inhibited by technological limitations as a result too. Absolutely. So so I would say that the genre has really um, um it's really been a huge boon to uh, have all this time to go, okay. This genre is not trending. It's not going to be back for a while. But then, now, years later, when it's suddenly um, relevant uh, again, we can use um, 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 uh, modern techniques and and uh, figure out how can we create something that people love just as much as the old stuff, but build on and, and, and to have um, uh, um, uh, new content now. So hey, sometimes you know you uh, want to be able to. Um, more games than you uh, want to play, but at the same time, if you kind of sit on this and, 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 and uh, take sometimes even years to uh, develop your uh, uh, formula, then you can make some more great stuff in the uh, present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as there's demand for it. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, you know what? Item capacity. How about increasing it? stats over to this piece of equipment, but uh, I don't want to risk it. Okay. You know what? Though I guess your current loadout is not relevant to what I recall whatsoever, because you have <laughs> to start a, 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 a file. So. That is true, yes, yes, that is true, absolutely relevant, because I literally started the game from the game. Um, this was fine, just did it on my Vita. Yeah. Multitasking. Um... Uh, last time that you were over, um, I'm trying to think of it, I think 
that um, uh, uh, that was when Yasuke had, had a mixed No, that was, we watched, uh, it was either Kung uh, Pao? Yes. Either every animal is going to be dead, or every animal is going to be dead and, and, and come back to life and, and um, attack you. Yes. How does the, um, um, the, um, uh, God, what's it called again? The blank is the powerhouse of the soul. Uh, God, what's the big tag word for this game? What's that word you keep going to? Holiday season brings joy to us all. One sec, let me figure this out. We're in a cutscene. Well, we're in a cutscene. We're we're fighting the final boss from Final Fantasy VIII. Remember? Oh, that took. Oh, her, yes. And Christmas will be the most special of all. Doesn't it just warm the heart? Ark. The mitochondria. That's the word. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, that was I'm uh, blanking on. So. I have basically forgot this part, the uh, part of the game, because it's um, been a while. So basically, it's it it's some kind of virus, or is it magic that causes people's um, um, uh, mitochondria to um, uh, mutate? No, they just well, in her, it evolved to the point of self awareness, mm, and now it. it's influencing the others and trying to take over as their dominant species. Got it. Must know, you know. <laughs> Must now take over the uh, minute. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah, every time that I look at, at that at that character, all, all that I can think of is um, uh, Ultimisi. Oh no. I mean, those are some good goo effects for uh, 1997. Yeah, 1998, early 98. Uh, 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 we've talked about this, I think, at least once. Yeah, but I don't remember if it was during the footage that got lost. Fair enough. Um, uh, each time that we have a booth this up, we always go um, uh, 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 at least once. Like, is this a PS1 game? Jeez, mm -hmm. this is something. This is Square at their best and most, like, most prolific. At the time, it was like, well, what can technology do? Okay, let's just throw a bunch of money at it and, and get it, make it do all that. Who is the little ghost girl that keeps sneaking us to places? It's like that. There's like a scene in uh, Silent Hill 2 where, where, where you're chasing the ghost of the whole world's place. Silent Hill 1. 1. With uh, Cheryl. Yes, Cheryl. Sure. Uh, why? Why are you doing this? Wait, you again? Wait, you do a better I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker than me. <laughs> you again, but you are too light. You will not ruin my plans as you did last night. It's the nice Stop! There, there it is! That's the voice that I've been missing. Oh my god! Uh, alright, so... <laughs> I thought you said alt-right for a second. <laughs> alt-right? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's okay. It's all right. Oh no! Oh no! We're home. We're gonna get demonetized. <laughs> yep. Oh no! All that money that we're oh, gonna get from God. this. <laughs> I love how they took that, like, pre-rendered technology from FF7 and then just, like, let's make it in New York. Yeah. Let's, like, put a, put the whole Manhattan in the back there and make it something, like, borderline oh. recognizable. Ah. Well, um, uh, even then, uh, the visuals of it might be more of uh, 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 FF8. I think, I think it probably comes down to the fact that, uh, oh, that's not damage. I think character model is, is a full character model. Yeah. It felt like a weird episode of Popeye here. Yeah. But you know, with Parasite Eve 2, I felt like that was even more the case. Like, even the character, like, portraits in the menu look like they could actually be FF8 characters. Like, the art style okay. matched perfectly. Like, you could just plop them right into FF8 and they would look right at home, except for, like, except the guns. Mom, and the contemporary clothing. Right. Although there is a bonus weapon that you can get in Parasite Eve 2 that's a gun sword, gun blade. Oh shoot, okay. I I I'm guessing Parasite Eve 2 came over, or, around the time of what and, 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 and FF9 probably? So yeah, a little bit before FF9. FF9 came out in what, 2001? It was like right at the end of like yeah, yeah, Well, yeah. I don't want to say at the end of the life cycle, because the PS1 actually Hell hang, hung in there for a good while, but uh, but you can never beat the passage of our time forever. Right, but and but like the PS2, I think it was out at least in Japan by the time FF9 came out, so yeah. it was like it stuck around. Yeah. Um. Now before I totally forget, I have a question that that I would like to um, um, I'll bring up to you. Uh, the more that I look at the combat system for, for, for this game, the, the more that I start to wonder, uh, do you see the point in active time battle as opposed to just turn-based? Uh, because I, like, maybe this is just the fact that I haven't played FF7 seriously since I was a kid. Like, I, I am almost beat it back when I was a kid. But, um... I haven't spent a, enough recent time with um, active time um, uh, RPGs to really feel the point of the difference between that and just doing the turn-based. Well, this game is a bit different, right? Because you actually have to dodge the enemies while your gauge is charging up. That's that's a yeah. But But uh, um, I guess you know it's it's a little bit of a, like an extra element that you have to manage, like. Uh, I don't even know where I'm going, and I'm going the right direction. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. it's like, for example, I mean, you could see in real time better which character is going to go next, I guess, for your party. Um, and also, with active time, for example, like, if you have more than one party member, if you're that kind of an RPG, um, you could actually, like, I don't remember if uh, Chrono Trigger did this, but in like Final Fantasy games, uh, you could actually wait. What is this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you could actually stall a character. So like you could, if it's their turn, you could. You don't have to actually take the turn, and you can switch to another character when they reach their turn. So you can, like, if all three characters charge up their time gauge, you could have them go in any order you want. Okay. Fair. Yeah. So you can have like a character that gives you a buff, then the next character is buffed up, they attack, and then... But if everyone has has the same turn on, um, uh, um, uh, by default in, in, in a um, uh, turn-based, then it, uh, it um, uh, mitigates the, the difference that um, uh, that would make, because you just have a, a, a turn-based um, uh, RPG really swap, um, who goes in um, if if seeing that gauge fill up just makes you enjoy the game more, then I could see why it could be for someone. But I've never really 
felt enough of a serious difference that ATB brings to combat. For something like this, where you actually move around, that would make sense, but for a, a, a traditional AMA RPG where you're locked in place, for that, like 7, 8, and a 9, I, I don't really see as much need for it. Uh, and like I said, I mean, there, it, it's it, it it does make like a different like the way that you play the game. Because like if you get if you have one character, you give them haste, they're gonna basically go at double the rate. So you, it's not gonna be all characters going at the same time, and you choose which one goes first. Because you can actually have that one character go twice. True, but. So. True, but uh, uh, but uh, even then, like uh, not to be too much of a I'm a, I'm a contrarian, like if we're up and coming, but uh, but uh, even then, if, if if you use something like haste, but um, kept the system as a traditional um, a turn-based one, that guy can just have um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, two turns. So there's a lot of ways to set this all up together. Yeah, but, like, for example, it does make it, like, you have those other RPGs where you can actually see the turn, like, they'll show, like, all the icons of the characters and enemies of which turn can go, for example. Oh, um, oh, like, um, like, a tactics of, uh, A2. Yeah, kind of, but, like, let's say for non-tactics games. Um, so, what, like... Like, in that case, the factor is, like, if, do I go before this enemy, or does this enemy, you know, get the jump on? So, if you want to use that as a, as a, another, you know, factor of, uh, strategy, then you can't really have all your party members going at the same time. Uh, and our party equipment is running low on battery, so we gotta... Laptops get weak. I don't know, like the um, the big thing that sticks out in my head about ATB is um is I recall. Um, uh, um, uh, not being able to just drop the controller and go do something else for a, um, a little bit, like a, like a, let's say I was I, I was grabbing a snack or I'm um, going to a um, a bathroom. Uh, when I'm playing like a, um, a, um, a ETB um, RPG, all that stuck out in, in in my head was like um, I have to remember to pause it. Whereas when I'm playing a, a um, RPG, I like it's. I know that I'm arguing about like something really meaningless here because it, it's 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 just a matter of hitting the um, start button. But I like a um, RPG where if I'm on a a, um, a menu in combat, I can just put it down and not think about having to um, pause it. Um, uh, menu. Right. Yeah. But like that's I think entirely a matter of taste. Like, it, but in terms of like, does it make a difference or not? I think it does. That's the thing. Got. It. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like there's, there's, you know, and I mean, I, I also think that uh, part of it is they were just trying to make it a little more fresh because turn-based battles, as we knew them, were like were around for at least what six years by the time ATB came around. We've had like Final Fantasy one, two, three, four, four, five. Well, no, did it start in four or five? One, two, and three. I can't recall when ATB started. Uh, but and then we had other RPGs at the time and stuff. So. I'm really fun to it. Yeah. It's, it strikes me as really strange that, um, that the West didn't even get the actual Final Fantasies four and five. I know until like what they were. No, no, we got, we got, uh, we got them on the PS1. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. In the uh, Anthology and Chronicles uh, packages, along with the Chrono Trigger and Six. Uh, but yeah. 
Honestly, like, if I was, uh, I don't know, if I was old enough and, or, like, knew English enough to play RPGs back then, um, I don't think I would have been that confused if somebody said, look, this is, this is four, you didn't get two and three, but they were in Japan, and this is four, and, like, I don't think it would have been that confusing. They didn't have to rebrand four as two in the West. It is really strange. It's a little, like, unsettling. Game like, you know, there were, there were no two and three. What are you talking about? This is two. was labeled FF2, and FF6 was labeled FF3, got and it. FF5 got shot. Even though it's actually a really good game, like, FF5 had basically that, like, free-for-all job system, like FF Tactics, where all the characters, like, you could uh, give them any job you want, and you can have a party of all physical attackers or all mages if you want to, and, and so that was a lot of fun. And, came off as like it didn't have as much as strong of a narrative as others yeah like even two seemed like it had more of like established characters and from what i played mm -hmm. um i i almost beat two um so um so um, uh, back when i was younger i um and when i say younger like i want to say around 18 to 19 years old so, so during that, that, uh, that uh, two-year period, I beat FF1. So I beat the uh, Game Boy on that, on that. So I beat the Game Boy on that, on that advanced version. During that time, and I uh, almost beat all of them on FF2, but I lost my FF2. Uh, and that was also the uh, Game Boy on that. that were a little more like free in that way where it's like you're not so restricted to a linear plot that you know what I mean like FF1 was more like you have to kind of find your way around yeah like and, and that gets obtuse for old games like that but I feel like if you could inject that that kind of a game with modern design elements and here's uh, Tremors Oh man, I have new of a, of a, of a context for him without statement because since uh, the last time that we um, did this, I have actually watched Tremors. Ah. And, and that's a good movie. And now I see exactly who. <laughs> um, try, try not to move too fast. So this is a sub boss. Uh, I am. Wait, are you being suggested about the movie? Yeah, well, well it, it was more of a nod to the monsters from uh, uh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, right, because that's the one thing about Paris Eve is like her running speed is 
It's a little bit like she's on ice. Uh, which makes sense for active time battle, because they have the balance for that, but it would be nice if you could actually... Oh, I know. If you could actually run around the world exploring a little bit faster. Um, like, they could have slowed her down just for the battles. Right. Uh, does, uh, does that curse have two speed of fire? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. No, it's, it's quite, she's quite sluggish in that one as well, like, especially, because Parasite 2 was way more traditional survival horror based, like, it's all tank controls and multiple camera angles and everything, like, so it's, the exploration factor goes full on Resident Evil. Oh. Um, and so compared to Resident Evil, she moves like glasses. It's, yeah. Uh, you're used to it eventually, like, it's based out for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can pick them up, uh, you can uh, desensitize to pretty much anything as long as you do it. <laughs> yes, Matt, this is, this is why you shouldn't rub your meat too much. That's right, that's right. You do it enough, and then we'll just be desensitized. Obviously. Yes, we're talking. Obviously. <laughs> it's barbecue season, folks. What do you think? It is. It is. I don't think I would like to have a hop on the grill. All that I have here. Well, I have them up. Hey, I'm a basement. So all of my steaks are are on the on the stove top. I, I I don't got no grill. You gotta get yourself a George Foreman. You gotta get yourself a George Foreman. Uh, so I've been playing Days Gone. How is Days Gone? It's fantastic, man. Um, I I mean I heard it was really glitchy when it first came out, but I guess they patched it up good now because it's, it's so much fun. It's perfect. I think I've had all of one instance where somebody's face model didn't load in, but... Also, how did cooking up a steak remind you of Days Gone? How did that happen? Oh, just, you know, playing a horror game, uh... <laughs> uh you do get to uh, hunt animals in that and uh, chop them down for meat. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, that's one big man, baby. So, so the final phase of uh, this, yeah. this episode. Yes. And if I lose for this one, it will be a speed of victory. No. Hey! Would have been funnier if we actually managed to do one more attack just to sweep across the. Just to take a piece of you with it. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Like, it's. I kind of uh, felt like, I don't know, I might retire um, The Last of Us okay. as far as future uh, repeat break playthroughs go, because it's just, part two was just way too heartbreaking. And it's like, you know, it's a really well designed game, but I don't particularly feel like being depressed today, so I don't know if I want to play it. Yeah, I hear that um, on, on a, a technical level, Last of Us 2 is a, um, a good game, but I, um, the way that Neil Druckmann put it, if I if I recall correctly, is Last of Us 2 is 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 not built to be an enjoyable experience. I, I think was more or less the quote, hmm. which is well, the, the combat is super enjoyable. Combat is like if you take the combat for granted and we skin the game to be a ramble game, it could be a fantastic game. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, get yourself some uh, home new traps, some uh, tripwire, all, all that fun kind of. I'm like, yeah, bow and arrow with explosives on it, like it's. Oh, it, yeah, all the ammo really work. But yeah, the, the storyline is just depressing. It's like, like it's great for video games that like we can they can tell this kind of a narrative these days, like a mature, well written narrative with like heavy heavy themes but but like 
even movies are movies. Like, you don't, it's not like, hey, let's write this character like it's a real life character where, you know, you're gonna wanna kill yourself by the end of it because it's just like so real in terms of like the, their actions and the consequences of their actions. So, this is the smallest playing field ever. Yeah. This reminds me of the PS2 game. Yeah. Um, okay, so on um, uh, Revenge of the Sith, um, had a PS2 game, and the final phase of the final fight was super goofy. So, so, so when you play the uh, uh, Revenge of the uh, 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 Sith on uh, uh, PS2 game, uh, the, uh, the um, enemy versus um, uh, Obi Wan fight um, uh, takes place on several different sections of. Uh, uh, as you damage one another, you uh, go to uh, 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 different uh, areas to uh, uh, go along here and uh, try to fight one another in the uh, And the last plane that you can fight uh, uh, Anakin on is this tiny little box where the two of you can barely move. Uh, but uh, but you remember how at the end of the um, uh, level um, uh, during the fight? Uh, Anakin and Obi Wan are fighting on this little piece of metal where they can barely balance. Yeah. You're stuck on that for the last phase of the fight, and it is the size of what you're currently fighting on now in this game. And it's <laughs> wow. Well, I said last time this reminds me of the uh, intro to uh, Rondo of Blood, basically. Oh god, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. What's the worst place you could fight a fucking horse carriage? Um, uh, God, it's been a while since we've been on the It's been a little one to two years. Um, um, that's the one where death basically comes in for a fight at the start of the game. Yeah, and you're on a horse again. Yeah. yeah. Of course, the death fire, though. No, not Mac. Parasite Eve was obviously a smaller project than a, any Final Fantasy game. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they... Well, I don't know if it was even the same team, but I'm wondering if they kind of used it to help them, like, get better at, like, animation and um, rendering and modeling and stuff like that and kind of used it as, like, a small project where they could kind of take more time to develop the skills they needed for higher fidelity uh, visual experience like Final Fantasy VIII mm -hmm. was compared to seven. Absolutely. Daddy. You're... Oh, yes, I... I You're Daniel. I am Daniel. <laughs> ben, weren't you going to the concert? Daddy, why are you eating a pepperette in the middle of winter? <laughs> Came here with Mom, but she, she was all weird. Uh, he sounds like Urkel now. <laughs> Although with those shorts... Uh... What do you mean, boy? And what kind of a kid wears shorts during Christmas time in New York? Yeah, right. It's a little, little cold, I think. I what? came here with monsters. She's so three of us could be together. Yeah, okay. Okay. He, he's officially Urkel. <laughs> That's him. He's 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 in the pigeonhole in, in, in into that role. So that's why you came to get me. Mom went to the stage, but she freaked out. What do you mean, Mom freaked out? She hit me. No. I got near the stage and started to feel sick. I wanted to go home. Mom wasn't herself, Dad. She left, and everyone else went, too. That sounds like it sucks for your vocal cords. That sounds <laughs> like you really don't, like, don't do that for, for 20 years. <laughs> Lorraine. Voice actors who, who get stuck in... in in, in a role where it's like this is killing my fucking throat. I kind of feel sorry for yeah. for, for some of those people because that's how they bring home their bread. So, yeah. So and so it's not like oh, I'll just ask my boss if I can be cast in in, in uh, something else. This is what people come to you for, but it's fucking up your voice. Yeah. That's where I was stuck. Yeah. Uh, Jason Alexander, when he went to audition for Duckman, he did like this, like. The grittiest version of his voice that he could. Mm -hmm. And he recorded the pilot and he was just like, Yeah, yeah, it's just a one off thing. Yes, and then the pilot got picked up and he had to do that for four seasons. <laughs> oh, 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 oh boy. 
We have orders to evacuate all citizens out of Manhattan. Unfortunately, most people are out of the city for Christmas. What do we do, sir? Most people are out of the city for Christmas. Is that why uh, the sticky bandits come in to uh, rob the places? We, oh, oh God. Um, uh, what are they in the second one? No, we're, they were the wet bandits in the first one, and they were the sticky bandits. Sticky in the bandits. <laughs> we're not the wet bandits anymore. We're the sticky bandits. Get it right. <laughs> we, we will stay and assist in neutralizing Eve. Shouldn't we leave it to the army? We're the ones that are supposed to be protecting the city. Any word for Maya? Hmm. That is one of my favorite things of both PS1 games. Like, since you didn't have voice acting to supplement, like, um, a line delivery, everyone was always doing big shrugs, big arm yeah. motions. That was Everybody such a huge was thing. Everybody was Italian. Yeah, absolutely. I need you to help evacuate the citizens. She's our only hope against this thing now. I'm going to look for her. Now, the one thing that actually, like, now that you mentioned that, um... I felt like Dino Crisis 2 nailed a way more natural kind of... Like uh, body movements? Yeah, like they would basically just pace around as they talk to each other. Mm. Like they wouldn't use their hands like Resident Evil 3 did. They would just like hold their guns and like pace around. So it still gave them an action. They're not just standing there perfectly still. But they didn't have to like do everything with their hands. Was a Dino Crisis 1 after um, uh, RE3? One was the same year as RE3, and two was after. Got it. Okay. Like, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two came out after one. Can you believe that? What? <laughs> you mean that every franchise isn't like Star Wars that just renamed all, the, all, all of their um, entries and came out at different times? See, if, if Resident Evil wanted to make another prequel, would they have to, like, go negative one? Well, like... if Well, well the thing is... It's it's kind of like an option. The weird thing about Resident Evil is is that is that franchise's canon storyline has been altered and picked out and like I'm um, picked around with so many times that it's kind of hard to pin down which series of um, events are um, correct. Like when you look at uh, at um, Resident Evil Zero, that game takes place like what? Twenty four hours before one. Well, um, um, twenty four hours um, before one. And, and um, um, if I re if I recall correctly, there's um, a document in um, uh, RE1 um, uh, cataloging things that just happened, like what, like um, uh, 24 hours ago. The, the, there's um, uh, uh, there's either that or uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, cast members from Zero who are like, oh yeah, the, uh, uh, um, uh, this just um, uh, just happened, and, and and we have this um, uh, detailed um, uh, um, uh, report. Um, um, on it. And this shit just happened just one day ago. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but the biggest issue was that um, you know, Rebecca did not come off as a character who just went through this whole ordeal. She she was, in one, she was still a naive noob and she wasn't like I just had a horrible like, like, experience. Like, yeah. like she, not just the horrible experience, but it's like, you know what, I, have, I actually just faced these guys already. Mm -hmm. Like, she, she froze in front of a hunter, even though you kill, like, a dozen of them in zero. Mm. So, obviously, like, that kind of negates Chris's whole scenario as far as how it's sold in RE1 or in the uh, RE1 remake for that. <laughs> That's look, fucking... look at how quick he came to a stop. That taxi driver's I know, amazing. And it's, and it's fucking slushy outside, too, man. Wow. Like, it's snowing outside, and he just... He's like, that's the greatest driver I've ever was, seen. He was really motivated by not wanting to be a cop killer. My god. That car just broke the laws of physics. <laughs> yeah, that car, that's... It's a good taxi. How many times do I gotta tell ya? We've blocked this off. Oh uh, yes, we have the, uh, the uh, Japanese man that obviously has a very clearly American accent because... What are we supposed to do? Talk like this? I told you, I've already contacted the police about this matter. What? Uh, I'm not getting anywhere with my English. <laughs> May maybe I should speak a bit slower and I'm uh, more, I'm uh, choppy. Hey, you Chinese? 
Nani, I am Javanese. Nanda. No, wait, well, he's still American, so. Nanda Nihonjin Desuka? Yeah. Oh, yes, you can speak fluent Japanese. Beautiful, <laughs> wonderful. Chota Dakane. Dare deska. I am a uh, Kuni. I, I am um, uh, Maida Kunihiko, or uh, Japanese. Uh, uh, he. <laughs> when he held up his hands, I thought he was going to do like Naruto hand signs or something. <laughs> I mean, with those pixels, it almost looks like he is. L let me speak to you in the language of, of uh, my people. Go back to your country. <laughs> we don't need no Chinaman. <laughs> Calm down. Take it easy, man. It's bad for your heart. <laughs> All that, those Japanese always giving this man heart attacks. <laughs> with with their hand signs. With their Naruto hand signs. I, I thought you were making a, 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 a Death Note reference. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the heart attacks. Yeah. So apparently the new um, Iron Maiden album is going to be named after a Naruto term. Really? Sun... Some desku or something like that. Like it's, I looked it up, and the only thing that comes up when I look it up is Naruto. Okay, okay. I, I mean, it, there is a direct translation to it, like Sageism or something like that. But, mm. but yeah, they basically have a samurai on the cover. Of it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, if we don't advance the text, I guess it's no. If if we don't advance the text, this man ends up on fire for a very very long time. We can just hang out and chat about our yeah, day for a yeah day. Okay. yeah. Let's just like these two cops are like dancing around him and he's just <laughs> he's just in flames for an indefinite number of. Look at that amazing two step from the one on the I right. Know. <laughs> Oh, hang on, hang on. Well, you want a gif of this? I'm gonna try. Uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna see if I can make like a gif of this later. I mean, you you'll have the footage, so yeah, that you could probably uh, to be nice with that if it didn't have the text. But good lord. Oh no. I guess it's now or never if I'm gonna nail this great two-step. Yep. And uh, this man is. Surprising that he's still writing. He's uh, he is full of combust, full of com um, uh, co um, uh, combustible fat. Um, hey, uh, hey! If 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 cops are referred to as pigs, does that mean that they can smell bacon then? One one would certainly think crispy. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can do something with uh, that. Even way. without advancing the text, like you know what? This would be a pretty good gift right there. Yeah. With no text. Um, spontaneous. Spontaneous human combustion. I, I think that is correct. Like, he's still on fire for a very long I don't think he made it. You know, I think this one might have died. Yeah. Can we get a fatality count on a, <laughs> on, on, on a Parasite Eve one? If I, we were streaming, right, they do like counters and stuff hmm. for some streamers. Like, yeah, that would be a. Wait, um, a fatality counter? No, no, like, like sometimes somebody would be like, okay, so. We'll have a counter for how many times I die on this area, oh, and then somebody yes. would absolutely like for a uh, a um, a Dark Souls um, specifically or something like that. Oh yeah. yeah, or or whatever, like a uh, counter for every time I do something stupid in this game, like something like that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I've seen Twitch streamers do that. Yeah, a hospital, a hospital, a hospital. Uh, we've we've got about um, uh, ten minutes. Totally this is about. almost the end of the chapter. Perfect. 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 Remember the dirty apartment. I do remember the, the dirty apartment. See, this apartment would fit right in in Silent Hill. Some Silent Hill um, apartments actually look a little better than this. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> At least tidier. Oh, you're finally awake. You are finally awake. Who are you? I love the animation of the shadows bouncing off the room. I am, uh, so, oh yeah, it's good. I am, uh, Maida Kunihiko. I, I, I am a scientist from Japan. He found you. No, that was Daniel. He found you, Earl. We don't, who, who could have said that? Daniel! There's no one out there but cops. It's a ghost town. 
Yeah, you know those ghost towns. You roll right in, nothing but cops. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but cops. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Pretty creepy, if you ask me. Yeah, but, you know, people liquefying from their eyeballs. Not that creepy at all. No, no, that was actually um, uh, um, uh, relatively mild. Where's Eve? What happened to the people in the Central Park? I kind of got knocked the fuck out after I rolled in that carriage. Uh, ben was okay, but... The rest of the audience, well, uh, they turned into smoothies. I'm sorry to, I'm, 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 I'm sorry to inform you of this. Turned into gravy. Disappeared? You mean they weren't ignited? They all melted into slime and became one big mess. Well, you know what happened. People congregate to have a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they turned into a, oh, oh, they turned into a, 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 a big Dragon Quest slime. Gross. Oh, that is something new. Nothing like what happened in Japan. Japan? What's Japan? A similar incident uh, occurred several years ago in Japan. Although it wasn't as grandiose a scale as this one. No, it was an actual thriller novel. <laughs> it's not, not visually tall. What? Hey, give us the details. Recap the novel for us, please. It all started when... It it all started when a scientist's wife was involved in a car accident. The scientist tried to culture her liver cells in order to keep her alive. The scientist named those cells... Eve. Like some kind of parasite! Eve! The liver cells multiplied and her mitochondria eventually took over her physical body. Oh! <laughs> after, after acquiring the scientist's sperm, he tried to give birth to an ultimate baby. Ultimate baby? What kind? <laughs> you gotta see the baby! It was turning into Metroid of um, a... Uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, other end now, yeah. It, what kind of baby? It's just the baby. She, the being you who mutated from the liver cells, could maintain her body for long. By the way, before the car accident, her. The wife had registered to have her own kids still That would have been a nice uh, piece of information to say before. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I mean, kind of realistic. It's like he's remembering the events of the book, but then he's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that. Yeah. But it still feels like, uh, it still feels a lot like he's recapping a plot of a book and not actual. <laughs> Absolutely. So after the accident, her kidneys were transplanted into a young girl. Eve implanted a fertilized egg in, 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 to the young girl who gave birth to an ultimate life. I was extremely interested in this activist lab, so I could continue research. I was hoping that a big blob would try to milk me for something. I don't know why I'm that's doing kind of, That's kind of what she ended up doing in the book. Like She kind of engulfed him and tried to stimulate him until she got to see, basically. That's, that's all it is. It's like, like he, was, he was like a bull, basically. You know how they just... They're like, yeah, we need, we need to just jerk off a bull, like, casually, you know? <laughs> just a casual jerk off. This is, this is what they do with uh, impregnating cows. They just jerk off a bull, like, no nonsense, and then inject the cow with a, with a turkey base. Literally. Oh, okay. After hearing about this incident, I had to fly over here. What the hell is going on here? After hearing that a bunch of people died in a freak, like, event, I had to go there. Yeah, it's like, uh, dude, dude, I... Listen, this is gonna be great for my new novel. I gotta see this firsthand. <laughs> I wish I could explain more. Oh, Aya, yeah. are, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I thought that monster had gotten a hold of you, though it was too... Th thought it was too late. When I felt Eve, something inside of me felt like I was being... You felt... You felt you were about to be ignited, correct? No, she's... Well, she's the only one that isn't affected. What? Are you some kind of main character or something? I... I don't understand. Uh, I think 
I may be a monster, like her. Like some kind of monster from Space Jam. What? What are you saying, Aya? I don't know. What if, what if I end up killing you? Oh, shut up. You know that's not. Please, Daniel. I don't know. I just don't know anymore. Please go away. Just, just stay away from me. Oh, yeah. I said get the fuck out! <laughs> Catch it. <laughs> Set him on fire. <laughs> Please. Uh, yes, I understand your point. Hey, where do you think you're going? Around the barrel of fire. Why? That could not have been a slower exit. Even if I am a monster, I don't ever want to kill you, Daniel. Please. I, I could never forgive myself if I killed you. Any, any other person, that's fine. But you, Daniel. Just listen, seven billion people I can fucking kill off, but as long as Daniel remains, it's fine. Aya, you're no monster. You're my best partner, Aya Brea. I'll be by your side, always Aya. You know, originally I thought her name was Aya, so I was like, wait, Aya Brea? Aya Brea. Whoa, easy there, Daniel. You're, you're a, I'm a married man. Come on. Man. Yeah, personal space, buddy. Yeah. See, this, this game would be very different if they were an actual, like, odd, you know, buddy pairing, like, he's a seasoned cop. But Maya died in the car crash with Mom. No, it just couldn't be. He's a seasoned cop on the verge of divorce. She's... A special creature who can set things on fire with her mind. What kind of shenanigans are they gonna get into on their first patrol? And together we fight crime on the mean streets of New York. So this was day two. Now we're starting day three. How many Lethal Weapon movies are there? Four? Okay, this one can be number five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll be on tool for this shit. Yeah. Okay, I uh, do have to, to um, uh, go to the bathroom, and you well, do have to call it. Yeah, so we are uh, done with day two. This time, I could see on the computer that it's actually been recorded. We did it! Awesome. We're, we're the best out of Parasite. Best ever. So, my name is Eric. My name is Matt. We are 21st Century Arcade. And thanks for coming out to join us. Yes. Take care. Take care.